All right, guys. All right, let's get at it. Let's get it. Let's get into something a, uh, a little bit away from what the, all the other uh, nonsense we've been talking about. <laughs> Uh, and just back to something other nonsense we've been talking about, okay? Uh, a while back, Noah Sampson made a video. Well, actually, it starts with this Rob's Media guy. He made a video um, about his hair gel. I don't know. Cool stuff. He made a video about bread tubers right here, why I hate bread tubers. Uh, and then Noah Sampson, the bread tubers the right here, responded to it. I watched Noah's response first, or one of 17,000 parts of it instead of one comprehensive response. And then I watched the original one made some points. Now this Rob's media guy responded. And I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I'm going to be very vain here. I'm only reacting to it because I'm in it. <laughs> Somebody's like, hey, Papa Gut, you're in this video a lot. Like, just parts, like, chunks of what you said. Based. I always, I love, I, I'm a little bit, I have, I have an ego. I like it to be stroked. Okay? Even if it's a small thing to stroke. So, let's take a look at this, man. Let's, let's chat, let's check it out. Let's check this out. Let's go. Responding to Noah Sampson by Rob's Media. So I've been wanting to respond to Noah Sampson's coverage of my Why I Hate Bread Tubers video. Your, your voice does not match your face. I'm just going to be real with you, brother. But, okay. Which he decided to split into multiple parts for some reason. Unlike him, I don't like wasting my audience's time. Listen, it's a, it, it might be a decent strategy from the perspective of getting a lot of content out, but it, I just... Be more comprehensive. So I'll only be going over the main egregious points Noah made. I'll link all of his videos below. Don't harass the guy, obviously. I'm linking them for full transparency. Chud Logic accusations. What really caught my oh yeah, this is uh, Chud Logic. He um, talked to an 18-year-old an girl when he was like 30, and that's um, pedophile-ish. Now, listen. Well, just talking. Well, here's my thing. I'm not gonna lie. I've jorked it to different stuff before, as long as it's legal. Dating is a little different. I'd never date an 18-year-old. I don't know what I'd have in common with them. But uh, frankly, I don't care at all if it's a legal adult. I also don't care if you want to chat with your fans. They're adults. Groupies were a thing. I don't know if you guys know what groupies are, but those are groups of people who follow bands around, and they want to sleep with them. If you're a consenting adult, you can do that. It's cool to sleep with famous guys sometimes, I guess. Uh, I pers I've ne personally, I never did that. I've never slept with. I'd never slept with a famous guy before. Um, I didn't like it. My attention. Listen, of Noah's responses is the downright slander stuff he said about YouTuber, streamer, and fat British guy Chud Logic. In my original video, I brought up this infamous Noah tweet where he calls Chud a pedo and insists he should be brutally killed. I'll address this tweet more later. But you know, freak streamers like this one to be rounded up and melted in a large cast iron thing. Oh, I forgot there was something. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's focus on the important part. Noah is outright trying to paint Chud as a pedo. So we know other. Yeah, well, that's what it is. And even his in his, his change of it, he still tried to make him seem like a predator. So a YouTuber agrees with. But this uh, Chud Logic guy, I, I called him a pedophile for, I think, more tangible reasons. He was not really. So he was a uh, horny texting um, an 18 year old fan of his in his discord. He was in his mid 30s. So like at least 35. I Whatever, who cares? How old is Chud Logic? He's like 40? This guy looks weirdly a younger than me, but... It's at 37, I don't remember exactly what it is. In who cares? Messages, he frequently <coughs> references or kind of asks about her virginity. He says, I'm going to penetrate... Yes, this is the point that I was going to make just before. So Chud Logic's... Oh, excuse me, Chud Logic. <laughs> Noah Sampson's defense to him saying that he wants Chud Logic to not be alive anymore is, hey guys, we were just Twitter memeing. Okay, I can accept that. But then he goes in on Chud Logic Twitter memeing inside of his conversation. That's what this is. That's all this stuff is. You're just a shy virgin, LOL. That's a Twitter meme. You're ver the, the epic Chad and the virgin Mary. I don't, I don't really know Twitter memes, but these are just memes. They're memeing. You can't meme and then get upset for other people memeing. Oh my God. This is fucking wild. Straight the shyness. She says, you just don't understand me because you're a boomer. And he says, nah, you're just a shy virgin, lol. So let's go over the full context. In early 2021, a Twitter user made a thread detailing her experience of Chud the year prior. She said she was a fan of his and he'd message her first with this glorious what is it? Wow, incredible. Is that Mudahar? Sorry, that's not appropriate. My bad. That wasn't me. Let's edit that out. Uh, CW, abuse sexual things, grooming. <laughs> I wish I knew how to word things properly. And the fact that this isn't something I want to do doesn't help, but I feel morally obligated to say something as to improve the safety of young people in the online leftist community. A thread, first of all, you are related to me. I beg you don't do this. What? What? What is happening here? What is the? What's the? I joined the Discord of a certain bread tuber earlier this year, and I experienced grooming from the person who the server was controlled around. The person was Chud Logic. I have. To, should we read this thread? Thread detailing your experience of Chud. Your 
Is there... If she was 18, I don't care. You really... It's almost impossible to groom adults. I just want to be very clear here. Uh, grooming is an uh, is a, uh, intentional, methodical, uh, a manipulative uh, process of uh, intentionally setting up typically a child up for typically sexual exploitation. It's almost impossible to groom grown adults. Um, I don't know what else to say. You would have had to show quite a bit. Is there an actual thing here? Prior, she said she was a fan of his, and he'd message her first with this glorious image. Hey, was that Mudahar? They'd send messages back and forth for months. Usually, uh, my ass small sounds perfect for me. I like small things like that. Small ass, small boobs, perfect. <laughs> Loser, I like big fat boobs and saggy boobs. Incredible being flirty or inappropriate. Sure, they're weird and creepy, but you can say that for any leaked sexual exchanges. I mean, they're just cringe. I, I don't Okay. Thank you for the $2 from Tingle My Pinkle. Dan Pava, 800 viewers from Farming Hassan. It will, it's it's short-lived. Not once does Haley push back against what Chud is saying, and she clearly removed context based on these screenshots. At one point, Chud says that he doesn't want to flirt with someone who's a young adult, with his limit being someone half his age plus seven. Um... Well, it's just inappropriate for me to be flirting with someone who's underage or even young. I like 18. It's supposed to be half your age plus seven. I don't know. Sorry, I'm awkward. Don't be. Are you awkward about telling, talking to me like this? If you don't like that, you can say, I, what is this? Chad was 34 at the time, meaning the youngest he flirt with is 24. Well, I asked her, um, you know, obviously I can't speak to someone that's underage. How old are you? And she said she was over 18. Um, she didn't give me like a specific age. Um, yeah, okay. but then, but then later when she came up with the kind of tweet about it, she said that she was 17 at the time. So did she, but he had 2000 subscribers at the time. <laughs> Oh, that's a hell of a groomer out there. I mean, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I feel like you have a dad. You have to at least have 10,000 YouTube subscribers to be a groomer. Or 100,000 TikTok subscribers. I'm putting a number on it. You have to have a certain number of subs. You can't be a groomer with, two, with 2K subs. You can't do... I don't think you can do that. I don't even know if it's possible. What? You claim that you were, like, grooming her? Yeah, that was the claim. And funnily enough, in the original allegation, which, again, you can see in the Destiny video, um... She never, she never said, like she said, she said herself, oh, um, I said that I was 18 and never, never really made a big deal out of this idea that I was some sort of pedophile, but that became the narrative. That became the narrative that grew up off the back of it. So yeah, this Haley person lied about their age and is now playing victim while trying to ruin Chud's career. No Were they actually under 18 or something? Um, so they flirted? Did he send a dick pic? Well, that makes fun of debate bro logic. Did he send his penor? By using the term a file. Well, it's just inappropriate for me to be flirting with someone who is underage or did he send his peen or, or anything like my my the insinuation i'm getting from this is that like they they full blown send boobs and wieners did that happen or am i am i being misled even young like 18 it's supposed to be half your age plus seven so yes technically you guys got me he's not at a file he's in the FIBA file <laughs> this is me <laughs> <laughs> What he's trying to insinuate, insinuate is he's a predator. Like that's the the issue that I have here, uh, and he's obviously not. It's the debate, Lord. At least not in this instance. I mean, I guess he could be, but there's no. From what I've seen, there's nothing to insinuate that in any capacity. Meme that you are differentiating. That definition is straight up dumb. It conflates that being attracted to 15 year olds is the same as being attracted to 19 year olds. Seven. So yes, technically you guys got me. He's not a file. Well, he's actually, a actually file. you guys got me. Dude, he's a I want to let you slurs against you. Whoa, that's not a good first thing to hear from me. Slurs are bad. Come on. Ebophile stretches to the age 19. I no. The fuck out of here. Ebophile is not somebody who's attracted to 19 year olds. Uh I know that I updated this in person. Uh that he's trying to insinuate he's a predator, and that's what matters. And he's clearly not. There's no way. Thank you for the 20. I hate listening to myself. You'd think I love it. Thank you for five dollars from LM0956. I'm a 25-year-old married man, and Papa's fan face can groom. <laughs> Wait. Sorry, ba Papa's face can groom to me being too handsome and charismatic. Incredible. There's oh. absolutely no way. <laughs> okay, maybe it's a dictionary definition. I don't care. He's a tri Jesus fucking Christ. Chud was flirting with someone. All right, well, that, that was me rambling. I wish it was a little better representation. But my point is, is that he's trying to assume that he's a groomer. He's not. He believed was an adult. So nothing he did was morally wrong. You can call him creepy, but in no way is Chud a groomer. And yes, Noah calls him that. He's not a file. He's a FIBA file and a weirdo and a groomer. He oh, he groomed people. Thank you so much for the one month small gut from Defiant. I'm a Papa Gutophile. Incredible. Yeah, this was a fan of his in his Discord. Oh, oh no, not your fans, dude. Are you going to go after Ozzy Osbourne next, dude? Go ahead. <laughs>
<laughs> what? out to you personally uh, as a 35 year old man. And again, she was underage, but she lied about it. So not a profile, just all those other things. Again, she lied about her age maliciously to get attention from him. He didn't even, he seemed to just lightly flirt with her. Didn't even send her wiener pictures. I mean, you shouldn't be flirting with underage people, but like, he, it's not like he needed to confirm because he wasn't really doing anything. He was like, hey, he was flirt they flirted a little bit. Then he's like, oh, I'm uncomfortable talking to girls that are too young. And then, and then they stopped. That's what was that? Well, that's what I got out of that. If he knew she was 17, then yes, you'd be right. But that's not the case and you know it. Plus, she could have been lying about her age there too to make him look worse. He's a febophile and a weirdo and a groomer. Because okay. again, this was a fan of his. And How is he a groomer? His Discord, who he reached out to personally. Who cares? Do you know what grooming is? Uh, as a 35 year old. Yeah, good question. That doesn't make anybody a groomer. You realize that grooming is more than just talking to somebody younger than you, right? Like, grooming is an intentional, methodical process of setting up typically a child, typically up for sexual exploitation. That's very true. Thank you so much. Contacting somebody who's 18 years old, a fan of yours, is not grooming. Just because they like you because they're your fan already, doesn't mean that you've groomed them. Or are you going to start making videos about groupies? I would love to see the videos about people who make music and how they're raping all their fans for having sex with those groupies. Okay, it's not grooming. It's just more like potentially building a relationship to sleep with somebody to get more comfortable with them before you potentially sleep with them or hit on them. It's not grooming. Noah also tries calling out hypocrisy for me joking about his appearance. True. Wait a minute. The thumbnail of this video says uh, that stranger danger with my face. He's he is just kind of doing that that, isn't he? Ooh. Ooh. I get called a while every other day on my YouTube channel and it's why? What? Does he really? Because, usually because of my mustache and my haircut. You know, pedo stash, it's sort of a classic insult. Noah, you falsely calling Chart a pedo is in no way comparable to me making a goofy thumbnail. The issue here is that Noah lacks the ability to be charitable. If one of his friends was in Chud Logic's shoes. Yes, good title. Papa Gut destroys Noah Samson with facts and logic. Shoes, he defended to the very end. But here he just has to go the extreme length to label someone he doesn't like a groomer. This just proves the dehumanization point I made in my original video. He's gotta label him the worst thing ever. No other YouTuber agrees with this take from Noah. Not even Chud Logic's sworn enemies. Xander what the hell is this? They're hauling Keffels. Wow, we call Keffels trans Frogan now. <laughs> and Frogan is Michigan Keffels. That's, that's what we call her now. <laughs> and speaking of Keffels. <laughs> downplaying Keffels. Noah does a lot of downplaying. I'm a little disappointed. Like, I honestly thought that once Keffels shredded through her, uh, all of her credibility, she would open up an OnlyFans. And I was curious. I would have paid for the leaks. I mean, I wouldn't have paid for it. Well, I would have. It depends on the, the price. But actually, I heard that she might have gotten the bottom part taken off. And it's like, I don't know what's more. Do you know what I'm saying? Sure. In these videos, with one such case being Keffels. In my original video, I said that I think Keffels is way worse than Vosh, something Noah scoffs at. One of those offenders was Keffels, who, in my opinion, is way worse than Vosh. Breaking, Rob's media thinks Keffels is worse than Vosh. Maybe I don't really care to compare the two. More at 11. Log off, log off, log off, please log off, please log off, please log off. He basically ignores most of my criticisms of her and only covers the thumbnail discourse. He doesn't think Keffels was acting in bad faith during her drama of Mudahar and thinks that the thumbnail. Well, I, I mean, she, obviously. Yeah, she's a psychopath. What could have been seen as unintentionally transphobic. Drawing people ugly or like fucked up looking manifests in different ways. It can manifest in exaggerating certain features and those features can create caricature. You can imagine someone drawing a picture of someone trying to make them look ugly and in that True. ugliness making them into a racist caricature, let's say. And so one way I think- Uh, you're calling that guy ugly? I think he's rather handsome, okay? And that's my grandfather. <laughs> Just so you- but it was before the makeover, if you, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, Okay. This could be transphobic, not even necessarily intentionally, is drawing someone ugly by masculinizing their face. I mean, it's just an ugly picture. I don't think it's that deep. I don't think Mudahar is trying to be transphobic. He actively speaks out against transphobia in this community. You really can't play the transphobia game with him, so. Which is a very common way for transphobes to essentially try to paint trans women as men in disguise. Do I think the artist did that? Transformers. No, oh, personally. inappropriate. Thank you, Ryan Plots, for the $5. Critical hit. I like that. I've never seen this before. I think it's pretty cool. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. Oop, um, I don't. I have no sorry, reason to believe that based on the history of the works of art he's done. But the transphobia in question here is more of a broader structure of types of things that happen. And I think that's a conversation. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Keffels, I I don't remember this. I don't internalize everything that happens. Okay, the only thing I remember are Disney re and related things and my wife because I'm a Disney adult and I love my wife. But Keffels is kind of a scumbag, so you know you shouldn't be uh, transphobic to people that are trans and bad. But also, not my primary concern in the topic. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's a time and a place to care about certain things, and I don't really. I don't. Keffels is a bad person. So. Having. Is it a conversation that needs to be had before addressing all the like serious shit that this person did? Probably not. Like you can see how this comes off here. That was a whole lot of nothing. Uh, he know. can't outright admit that what Keffel said was wrong. So he does this whole speech about transphobic art. Like, yeah, Noah, art like that exists. But Worm's art wasn't trying to do that. He didn't make her face masculine. He just made her look tired and sweaty like everyone else. Keffel shouldn't have called that out. Because she's a real American worker. A real American middle person. 
middle class American working for America, right? Oh, tired and sweaty, looking like a truck driver. Also, Noah doesn't seem to think this is a trump card by Keffels. Even though it was pretty much the only way she could actually go after Muda, she was using this to rile up her audience and get them to basically attack Muda without hearing out his criticisms laid out in his video. Now, Noah doesn't really defend it worked so well for her. Keffels, but he really doesn't have much to say about her actions. I do think Keffels is worse than Vosh because she's negatively affected way more people. Remember, she scammed her fans out of 100 grand. And Vosh only has negatively effect impacted short stack goblins. Ran to go on vacation. Both are bad people, but Noah doesn't have the ability to say that. Surprisingly, though, Noah has the courage to defend his pal Ethan is online. Yeah, I would say Ethan is a real scumbag. So, <clears throat> defending Ethan and Lex against their hit piece against Super Mega, which centralizes around Lex claiming she was sexually assaulted by the guy Dom, which may have happened, but then spending the majority of the video talking about how Super Mega is bad because of it, despite the fact that they blocked that guy Dom from getting work anywhere else after they fired him um, in general and apologized that they didn't do it sooner. And she, that was the most of it. And then her entire video is her lying about them kicking her out of the house, even though they were like really nice and trying to like get her to move out because they needed her to move. Uh, and they gave her a long time. And big, one of her chief complaints was that they didn't set a specific time. So it made it hard for her to figure out when she should leave. Incredible stuff. Very entitled perspective. It makes me question whether she was actually assaulted, considering most of her video about her assault was actually about Super Mega being bad somehow. Uh, one of the criticisms, again, too, was that um, they, they they didn't say anything publicly about it, even though this was like her trauma. Why would they? So, again, incredible stuff. Um, why would you instantly? At first, I was going to speculate on how Noah is offending Ethan is online and his girlfriend, Alex up Dog. But in part four, he flat out admitted to wanting to do so, at least for Ethan. Once Noah begins covering my take on the Super Mega drama, he recommends a video by Unpoetic Justice. I want to give one more example of these guys weaponizing their audiences with malicious intent. The Super Mega drama. I won't get too detailed into this because there's loads of other videos that do a good job at that. Okay, I'm not going to either because exactly there's way too much content on this. Probably the best piece of content I saw about this whole thing was from a YouTuber called Unpoetic Justice. I think if you're interested in this controversy, you should go watch that. Honestly, that's my take from here. And what take does she have? Well, she does agree that Matt and Ryan were unfairly targeted, but also sympathizes with Lex and never criticizes her actions. Because even if you agree that Lex was assaulted, the way her and her friends handled God. everything else in this drama was poor. Justice I don't, I frankly don't believe that she was assaulted. I'm not trying to be rude, but like considering the majority of that video is full of lies, why would I, why would I, why would I take one truth with the rest of the lies? I'm not trying to be an asshole, but like you're having a story about your assault, but the majority of the focus is about how these two irrelevant figures who operated, uh, I would think to, to the best of their ability, given the circumstances are actually the bad guys in this scenario. It, I, it's hard to believe, honestly. It's so it's so Twitter-brained. It's so internet-brained about this alleged assault that happened. Mainly just goes after Nick. And commentary channels like Lyrics are critical of Lex. She doesn't show the more egregious shit Lex did. Like her live stream with Ethan where they celebrate Super Mecha sub loss. Just like Noah, she pretends to be nuanced in order to subtly defend her side. But I don't know who that, that, that girl is. Maybe she has a decent take. I don't know. I can't really... Uh, say because I've never seen it. So what really got me wanting to make this response is this part of Noah's second video. But Rob's argument here um, is just fucked up. I didn't see anyone even making this argument. Throughout this drama, they pretty much use the topic of essay to motivate their audience to cancel Super Mega. He doesn't show how that. That's true. Thank you for two thousand mention motor problem. I'm twenty and my girlfriend is nineteen. Is that am I a Eva file? <laughs> yes. Yes. Happens in this video. And kidding. so from what I remember, there's a lot of disputes about the specifics of these stories, but the essay itself isn't one of them. But you can't no, that is a dispute about it. Just be clear. And just go watch this video. You'll even Dom's apology was apologizing for putting her in an un uncomfortable situation not for like explicitly sexually assaulting her and that could be a, a whole entire conversation about the dynamics between men and women especially and how men are more pushy and less emotionally intelligent and women have a different dynamic when it comes to that one-on-one -on -one sexual relationship there could be a lot there but it's hard to have that conversation because lex is a liar in general so why would i believe her on this one point it doesn't make any sense to me learn a thing or two <coughs> also, in conclusion um audiences being weaponized i don't oh, think so this? other than when vosh did the thing um using trans people in his audience as a shield against the fact that he was doing the related activities that was definitely audience weaponization the rest of these i simply disagree but that's just my opinion um this has been drama boy time silly drama boy time make sure to go outside and bye notice anything yeah no one no. completely cut me out of context Throughout this drama, I, I didn't notice anything. I personally, they pretty much use the topic of essay to motivate their audience to cancel Super Mega, right. even holding a live stream on Ethan's second channel to celebrate. This was pretty gross behavior, especially when Matt and Ryan. Well, I mean, Noah's perspective will be that if it was a valid sexual assault, then he does not going to care about that happening. That's going to be his like general take on that. So, his late friend Daniel was brought up. Lex alleged. Yeah, that was really messed up. They brought up his late friend Daniel, uh, who took his oh, tragically took his own life. 
and uh, they were making they were giving him shit for making jokes about it uh, and it's like you, you if you make if you give somebody shit for making jokes about their friend that took their own life then you are so disconnected from reality you don't understand how horrific it is and how people process trauma that's horrible your best friend took their own life it is okay to be angry at them it's okay to make jokes about it if it's your friend and you had that close personal relationship because that is a terrible deeply tragic situation to happen for you and different people are going to grieve differently that's a horrible thing and I would never tone police them on that kind of stuff and it's okay for them to be angry okay it's okay to be angry and and mad all right like there's a situation that I, I that i saw somewhat recently where um you know this guy i'm not even going to talk about it actually because that's probably not appropriate for that to talk about it but like it's okay to be upset with your friend that they took their own life it's okay to do that alleged that the two would make jokes about his passing which they denied even if they did who cares they're allowed to make jokes about their trauma i mean ryan was the one who found his thank you for the small gut from tickle my grimy <laughs> tickle me grimy okay body. I then show Ryan talking about how their mention of Daniel negatively affected him, and then mention how Daniel's goodbye video was bombarded by negative comments. Noah cut out an entire minute and a half of my video because he didn't know how to argue with my points. He just shows the beginning of my argument and not my example to make me look bad. And just like Justice, he doesn't show the live stream with Ethan and Lex. This is downright malicious and hypocritical, as Noah has criticized others for way less. He just cut that line right out. And this is important, right? Because this line directly refutes Sean's narrative. Oh, is that the Illy thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I, that Illy girl, I tend to side with her more in that uh, situation. I think that that was a video that was just expressing her relationship with her way of growing up. And um, I forgot the other guy. Oh, um, uh, the, the, uh, think before you sleep. He, he, he fucking, uh, you know, Ben Shapiro did too much. <laughs> like, I think that he missed the point of what the video was. There might, there might have been some, a few factual in, uh, uh, inaccuracies, in, I guess, in general. But, like, he just missed the entire point of the video. And so if he was like, hey, I understand what her point of the video is. I just disagree on these points. It would have been fine. But he didn't even, like, uh, come up with any of those, like, uh, you know, those aspects of it. So I wasn't a particular fan. Um, narrative that Illy is promoting obesity. This phrase, dietary restrictions, rules out the more extreme situations that Sean is referring to when he says that this will cause viewers to eat themselves into an early grave. And for those who haven't seen TBYS's response, he cut out that line for copyright reasons, and because it was an I'm not saying clause, there's nothing to do with this main argument. What Noah cut from my video does contribute to my argument, which is that the main accusers against Super Mega were weaponizing serious claims to destroy their careers. Noah will complain about three seconds being cut, but will cut a minute and a half of my video because it makes his friends look bad. And yes, him and Ethan are friends. Noah cuts out other parts of my Crazy. video. Though the only other egregious one is him removing my criticisms of Sneeko to make me look biased. While talking about Ethan's sketchy coverage of the Ava Chris Tyson situation, I made this joke which Noah takes offense to. Your recency bias should apply. God, he looks like a Courage the Cowardly Dog villain. <laughs> okay. Jesus, dude. I'm trying to take this thing seriously and then randomly he'll throw stuff in like that. What's up with that, man? You know, there's a cottage industry of videos out there dunking on Ethan is online. And there's a lot of stuff that goes on in those videos that uh, is fucked up and it's just very normalized, so. This guy is not unique. There's like 500 of this exact dude. They got the same politics, the same IQ, the same smugness. But you know, they've not got, <laughs> okay. they've not got his blood cholesterol percentage. They've hey, that's so mean, dude. My cholesterol is pretty high. That's why I take a cholesterol med. You know what I know something interesting about uh, your cholesterol medication? Take it at night. Apparently, you produce the most cholesterol when you're sleepy time. So, it's more effective at night. That's what I learned. Thank you so much for the small gut from Goose Arav. I hope I'm saying that right, brother. If not got his BMI score, and he can't take that away from him. I think I'll probably do a separate video called In Defense of Ethan is Online, because regardless of what you personally think of a guy, I, I feel like... Uh, he no, he's a real scumbag piece of shit. I don't really care. I mean, he's like a, he's a loser. Not just the super mega stuff. You know, he was criticizing Alex Rosen, which, by the way, worth criticizing. Uh, but what he does is, is meaningful, positive work, you know, catching pedophiles. But um, instead of saying like, hey, uh, he catches predators, but I disagree with his politics, which is perfectly fine because he has uh, like unhinged takes with his political takes. Uh, he was basically running defense for pedophiles. So just like an idiot video. He's so like he's just so anti fucking, you know, right brained that he can't have like an intelligent uh you know, perspective on anything. So, uh, and some of the things that he was saying were frankly disgusting. So, the amount of backlash he's received is very much not proportional to the, uh, the crimes in question, at least from what I've seen, such as examples such as as this. Yes, Noah wants to make a video defending Ethan is online. The hate Ethan gets is pretty reasonable. And it's not just coming from commentary channels. A lot of leftists heavily dislike this guy for valid reasons too. He spreads lies and false allegations to help cancel a YouTube channel his friends don't <laughs> like. He's, a he's willing to defend boy. pedos in order to criticize Alex Rosen. True that. He labels anyone of slightly different opinions as far right in order to demonize them to his audience, and he's just as as those he criticizes, making targeted attacks and completely Oh yeah, well I'm more hateful than those I criticize. <laughs> if you want to die on that hill of Ethan, go ahead. But I'm telling you now, Noah, that video will not go well.
I also love how he plays a clip from Big Bungie here. This legitimately made me laugh out loud, holy shit. Bungie says Why? way more edgy shit in this video, so I wouldn't be surprised if Noah only watched the intro and thought that was way too much for him. Another character that Ethan has tried to take down with his finite wit and intellect was Alex Rosen. So what happened here is that Ethan saw this guy go on Matt Walsh or some other Daily Wire show, and after that he researched him and said, what, what does this guy do? Oh, he arrests pedophiles? Get up down with the pedophiles! Team pedo for life! I find this all interesting because of how bizarre Noah's takes on edgy humor are. Safe edgy. All right. We talked about safe edginess in my original video, and Noah has given me way more examples from his newer videos alone. He's incredibly inconsistent, thinking certain things are okay to say, but others are completely unacceptable. For instance, Noah will take the time to justify his edgy death threat tweets, trying to explain the joke to his audience. But what really got banned was this tweet describing how he killed Elon Musk. Oh, this one was a banger, man. Elon Musk, I will kill you to death with a knife and a gun and a bomb and a nuke. Parody, 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 parody. Got him. Parody, parody. You know, I don't really miss using Twitter, but I miss the way. I think he he spammed parody over and over again because. Uh, you were only I don't know it's, it's something to do with Elon Musk's parody accounts are okay as long as you say that they're parodies uh, whatever uh, Twitter is an actual idiot cesspool just to be clear that it would frame my brain into cooking up some good shit because this is a good tweet this was also around the time where people were kind of pushing the limit on tweeting to see like what would get them banned because I think Elon had just taken over or people were getting banned for like random reasons I never had a problem with this by itself my issue is that he clearly doesn't think it's okay for people to say edgy shit against him or people he likes. I mean, he just saw him pearl clutch Put over your edge he against fat. me. And in another video, he takes offense to think before you sleep, calling him a retard. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, this word's so inappropriate, but it makes me giggle sometimes. Not good. Bad guy. Bad guy, guys. Bad man. There is no way someone who has not suffered multiple head injuries can be this re okay, Hey! So, w where to begin with this one? I guess the arsler. Why? You know, why use True. that? I'm pretty sure why use this bad guy word? Don't use that word. I know it makes you feel good because you use an intense word, but it's 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 offensive to people with intellectual disabilities, not TikTokers that pretend to have it. People in like legitimate group home settings who get offended when they go out in public and people call them the arsler and treat them as less than. You know, that's why I don't like the word. I try to be a nice guy. I'm not a nice guy, but I try to be. I'm sure this guy's like 35. What are you doing, man? If you Got think that I'm wrong about something or if you have criticism, there's a lot of other words you can use to uh, transmit yeah. that thought. It still always catches like me the off guard. The there's a lot of spaces. Yeah. Kidding. Just kidding. Don't do that. Just throw this shit around all the time. You can just use a different word Don't and then stop. not alienate a large subset of the population. Okay, True. but is he wrong though? Also, as an autistic guy, I give Sean the retard pass. Even just to be clear, and I just want to be very clear about this, like our slur thing. You know, I'm not trying to. I know understand it's more acceptable. I don't think people who use it are, are necessarily horrible people. Um. Just because you have autism or something doesn't mean, like, in my opinion, <laughs> dude, okay, listen. Everybody has, like, fucking something nowadays. They have, oh, I have autism, I have ADHD, I have this, I have that. We could all sit here, I could say, like, I have ADHD, I have OCD, I'm dyslexic. I could sit here and be like, well, guys, I can have the past. The reality is, is that, like, people aren't using that word against people like yourself or myself in a meaningful capacity. Uh, that word is really being used against people that are in, like, the IDD community. People that are, oh, my fucking titty balls. Oh, my fucking farts. Sorry. That's really being used against people um, that are in like group home. Oh, I just fucking wiped the raid. That are uh, in group home settings Only that strongest are going out and be that's being used to like oppress them in some capacity. Back. Right? Like I've heard stories of people in group home settings and what they say is like, you know, uh, the DSPs, they'll go out and they'll be trying to have a nice time at the mall with a group of other people. And you have especially like young men sitting there calling them the arsler, snickering behind their back, you know, ha, 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 all that stuff. That's the people that it really affects. It's not really affecting the kid with extraordinarily high-functioning autism, you know, that struggles to, like, fucking uh, relate to people and maybe has a fucking waifu pillow. What the fuck are you talking about that that just happened? What the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me right now? What the fuck was that? Fucking Jesus goddamn Christ. We need proof, here's my Lego collection. I am indeed worthy to give out the pass. Now based on what Noah said in his next video, he clearly isn't that offended by the word. In fact, he says he used to say it. He's doing this to appeal to his audience. This is what I meant by the fake nice guy shtick. If you're going to be performative like this, you probably shouldn't be justifying the edgy tweets you made about wanting to kill people you don't like. The issue here is that Noah clearly only thinks- Exactly, you could say silly goose instead of the arsler. So much better, much more impactful. It's okay for those on his side of the aisle to say edgy stuff. If someone he hates does it, then they're the worst person ever. I mean, this is the guy pretending to be disgusted by Chudlogic's messages, which amount to sex jokes. But him saying how he'd murder Elon Musk is A-OK. -okay. I think I got banned for this one, and then I- <laughs> Bro, it's just like, people are showing receipts of you saying insane shit, and you're like cope laughing about it. Like saying, yeah, this one's a banner. Like highlight reel. Like dude, you're just openly saying like this guy should be killed in the streets. It's just so cool. Um, what if he went he could be killed in the sheets with his big penor? Huh? You guys don't really know, liberal. Cringe. Especially coming from when, from someone like this. Or if like Ben Shapiro tweeted this shit out about some trans person. 
Bro, this would be a full 40 minute cinematic experience analysis video on your channel. Showing how he's this fascist, if he tweeted out something like that. <laughs> Noah also downplays the consent comment made by Jake Doolittle, which he tries to excuse oh, as out of context. Oh yeah, that's when he said that uh, the, the orange peanut assaulted a girl. Some wild ass shit, brothers, you know what I mean? Holy fucking dog shit, my bad. Despite the original comment being made out of nowhere, though Jake turned off the comments and edited out part of the video that made Ooh. him look bad. That Jake is just taking L's, man, because he had that whole Charlie D'Amelio thing where he whinged about that, and then he got fucking decimated by Ethan Klein. <laughs> it was over that whole, uh, what was it, uh, what was it, the uh, bug bite thing? Lyme disease. Jake has Lyme disease. He can't, he can't eat limes, so he's... <laughs> It's up there with a peanut allergy. Loser! That being the weird... Just kidding, sorry. If you have Lyme disease, I'm... <laughs> weird a consent comment. There's a possibility that you can't do <coughs> certain things, like bench an unconsenting girl, right, Orange Ooh. Peanut? Huh? What does that you mean? You want to repeat that one for me, Jake? Okay, yeah, the thing was removed, so I don't know what that was in response to, but he removed that part of the video, right? He said something? Yeah, it's still pretty gross, man. It's disgusting shit. I think he was criticized for it, and then he, t he took it out. Hey, guys, uh, I said the N-word with a hard R in my video, but I got criticized for it and I took it out. So actually, you're a sussy baka. Why do I use language like that? He deleted it. He do it to make him. I meant the sussy baka. I know why I use the N word. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just joshing. Self look good. I mean, maybe I'm just knowing. Right I mean, now. the fact that he edited oh, in me. the first place is far too comfortable. It's true. This guy's so smart. There's no justifier for that type of. Uh, there's true. no justifier for that ever. That's so, very true. Clear. What the fuck? Very true. I mean, he just did it because he made a mistake. You know? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like you're downplaying that mistake. Uh, it's a widow sussy that you're downplaying. Uh, okay. All right, guys. Why do you got to use the most cringe versions of Ash? Do I just talk and cringe all the time? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's my fault. Incredible. A little too much for me. All right. A little too much downplaying on that one, buddy. Okay. Very woke and cancel culture of you, Mr. Rob, to hold people to their mistakes <laughs> that they have rescinded. See, there it is. I can do it. Uh, woke <laughs> okay, and cancel yeah, this culture. One's a pretty big I don't think cancel culture is saying, hey, you did a bad thing. That's not good. Cancel culture is uh, being disproportionate in their uh, attack on somebody. Mistake. This one this one completely ruins the tempo of this entire video for you. Yeah, that was what's the beginning of this video. So if you're going to downplay somebody, like uh, just assinuating somebody's a rapist because they don't agree with them, that's a pretty uh, suspicious baka move. Okay, stop opinion. it. Okay? Stop. It's not really stop saying these things hypocritical that's oh okay. my god i guarantee you noah doesn't think it's bad when his friends say awful things like that i mean he's pals with us on piker who constantly makes disgusting remarks True. friend of the show noah samson i mean here's him justifying the rape noah of spoiled samson. rich girls at least patrick henry college is like doing one good thing Got which is that like if you have these fucking millionaire billionaire wasp fail sons um at least Man. taking them out of other colleges so they can only do date rape to other billionaire millionaire fail daughters is like in some respects you know from a utilitarian in hassan's uh defense who doesn't who likes wasps they are rude perspective of course just a kidding you know what i mean like this was a scumbag a little thing and he was also laughing about jews getting sexually assaulted too and downplaying that so like hassan just taking w's all over am i right guys uh or is he taking l's and i have to be very explicit about that because i don't want to get in, in trouble taking these guys and and um and, and putting them in, in a pen with one another is ultimately getting oh them God. away from the broader society. But I can guarantee you that during his By this logic, it's okay if Hassan got raped. So that's his logic because he is a millionaire. He started rich. Uh, everything was handed to him. So it's okay if he gets raped or killed or something, right? That's his. I mean, that's his logic. Not my logic. I think Hassan should be protected at all costs. I think he's an amazing contributor to society. That's my perspective, and I'm sticking to it, of course. But that's his perspective, and I disagree with it vehemently. It's a word. So, his Ethan defense video, he'll call out edgy jokes made by Big Bungie. What Hassan said there wasn't a joke. He believes this shit. Big Bingo. He's also safe edgy, making statements like that, but will plead with the mods of life. He's also just not funny. I'm a funny guy. I can make jokes because you guys know I'm not serious. But Tazan, I don't know if you guys know what this word is. A dog whistle. I think he's dog whistle. Oh my fucking balls. Dream fails for them to delete posts making fun of him. Noah's friend Bad Abanada also makes edgy statements like this one that I don't even want to read. Do you think that's okay to say, Noah? I'm not gonna because if it's bad either. to call Ethan fat, then you should think it's bad for your friends to make even worse statements. Damn. Maybe he called him very fat. Oh the my god. The reason why I decided to make this video is because Noah oh flat out defends Bad Abanada, though he pretends god. to be willfully ignorant. I called I don't out know Noah's association with Bad Abanada. I've heard that name multiple times. I still don't know who that is. Fuck is what a bad infanada because the guy is notorious for doxing and harassing his opponents. Empanada being a horrible person is pretty widely accepted. Even tankies hate the guy. In fact, Noah himself admitted two years ago that he thinks Empanada is a Wait bad a person. Minute. For context, this is from his Debate Bros video, where he shows a clip of Ben Empanada criticizing Vosh. Did you really just cite Ben Empanada in your video? Looks like you've lost me. That guy is a bad person. What the fuck is this? What are you showing me on my screen right now? 
What the hell is the paper clip? What, is the, what the fuck is this? Knocking back. I, you know, I was on TikTok Live the other day, and I saw a, a wolf. It's like a wolf picture of a wolf, a furry wolf with toes. And I said, this is disgusting. This is embarrassing. Why would you do this? This is worse to me. What the fuck is this? What the hell are you doing? Who is this guy? What the, what, what the hell is happening right now? What the hell are you doing? Everybody knows that. Me citing a clip of Bad oh. Empanada saying something that's objectively true is not an endorsement of everything that he has done on the internet. Please stop being a fucking baby. Just Couldn't, do, you think, do you think that maybe you could have found a better example of uh, that being true, though? If you're there, a bad person, why reference him at all? Good point, Papa Gut. Look at the meme, okay? Look at the meme. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's really helpful for me, actually. I'm slowly swinging around your baby's crib so you can gently fall asleep. Got him. Oh. Agreeing with someone's take is not a direct endorsement. Oh, that's why I didn't show that clip in my last video. Because in that first video, I showed a clip of Xander Hall criticizing Noah. And it's obvious that I don't endorse Xander Hall. Oh, because yeah? he's a moron. Did you criticize Haktua? Okay, stop. What? Stop but it. But now, Noah is defending Ben Apanada's actions and claiming he needs better evidence that the guy is a terrible person. Is he a known doxer, though? As far as I know, that's not true. I've never seen evidence of that, but I could be wrong. But he might be an unknown doxer. About that. So let's see what Rob uh, has to substantiate his claim that Bad Empanada is a known doxer. First up is a tweet exchange. It's a uh, Drew Pavlo says, Bad Empanada is now messaging me personally to threaten to post my home address and sue oh, me for geez. defamation. And then there's a quote tweet from Bad Empanada that says, I'm not going to post your home address or phone number, Drew, but maybe the people who keep sending them to me will. So first. Ah, uh, yeah, that sounds like kind of an, uh, it sounds like a, uh, what would you call that? Uh, an implied doxing threat? Yeah. Uh, First thing is that there's no screenshot provided here for the, the DMs that this person drew references of that. But yeah, but it doesn't really matter because the other guy is saying, is validating that it exists. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if there's any DMs. So. I'm not a supposedly threatening I'm to post saying. this information. That would be doxing and those DMs would be a threat of doxing. If you, if you literally, how do you not look at that and go like, wow, that is an implied threat. That is kind of like, he's implying that he will, it will be released. I mean, what are you talking about? But you can't make that claim just because this guy said that it happened. So here are those. I can make the claim because the other guy responded saying that it basically is going to happen. DMs or Ben Empanada threatens to dox Drew's family and shares a phone number. Luckily, this phone line was cut. Here's another oh, tweet shit. of Empanada threatening him. Here's him threatening to dox another person. And here's Empanada threatening someone and saying they should kill themselves. Here's a uh, testicular is, wart. No one years ago that Ben Empanada is a bad person. What changed? What made Noah change his mind? Is Ben Empanada like the flamenco guy? Is that that guy? Is it the same person? Because Empanada never changed. In fact, just a week prior to Noah releasing this video, Empanada got banned on Twitter again for leaking Drew's phone number. He's obviously been taken down now. Why would you release Drew P. Ball's number? <laughs> but there's still That's remnants funny. of this tweet online with the original caption. Even if he got this off Google, that doesn't make things better. Do you think Snapperwolf got Jack's phone's address on the dark web? No. She got it off Google. She's still revealing personal information to harass someone she doesn't like. Ben Empanada is a girl? Ew! Uh, what the fuck? Panada isn't doing this to seek legal action like Noah later suggests. He's just being a dick. If he really was trying to seek legal action, he should just hire a private investigator instead of doing things publicly. Now this next part I'm going to assume Noah doesn't know about. After I released my original video, Empanada faked a tweet to make me look like a pedophile, and he admitted Damn. it's fake. As he had a Freudian slip moment in my comment section, someone asked why Empanada would make that fake tweet, and he explained why without pushing back on it being called fake. He also admits here that the tweet is fake. His reasoning is because he claims I called him a pedophile, even though I merely said that someone else was alleging he was, and I just stated that the evidence against him isn't concrete. Could I have worded it better? Probably. But I never called- well, Sounds like you maybe you were insinuating the guy was a pedophile then. I don't know, I'm not gonna- uh, You know, I don't know. Call him a pedo. He used this as justification to send his fans to harass me, though he deleted uh -huh. all of this once he realized I wasn't going to engage with him the way he wanted me to. He also sent me this DM calling me a child rapist, so Damn. that was nice of him. Now, well, Sounds like these people online love calling each other predators and shit. What the fuck did I die to? Please stop defending this guy. If you like his videos, I won't take that away from you. But publicly associating with him okay. is a bad look. Most people weren't criticizing you for wanting to go on that live stream because they're Zionists. It's because he's a bad look for the pro-Palestine movement. What the hell is Ryan Beard doing here? Most people weren't criticizing you for wanting to go on that oh live stream God. because they're Zionists. It's because he's a bad look for the pro-Palestine movement. My Ryan Beard, he was in the chat before, and now he's in this video. Incredible stuff. My main criticism still stands. You shouldn't be fine of Empanada's behavior, and then shit on TBYS by saying he's responsible for Illumation's doxing. All that's changed is that I don't have to speculate on if these two are still friends. Noah confirms it and gives him a massive shout out. <sighs> An issue with Noah's recent response videos is that he unintentionally proves people's criticisms right. I mean, in his response to Shredded Nerd, he doesn't disprove anything. He just spends 25 minutes nitpicking and not understanding jokes. His best argument is to portray his opponent as some chronically online loser who's True. envious of those around him. 
This coming from Noah is hilarious. As in his first response to me, he said it took him an hour and a half to record his reactions to five minutes of my video. God, that poor editor. Having to edit through so much bullshit ramblings. Maybe he's his own editor. I don't know. Noah's audience doesn't seem to gel with this content from him, as I've seen numerous comments telling him this. A lot of them seem tired of Noah getting into pointless drama over and over again. So Noah, True, if you guys, are watching this, too. I'm not saying to stop making these sorts of videos in general. Just make videos of actual solid points instead of just nitpicking. Most of his critiques in my video can easily be chalked up to him having a different interpretation, or him being biased towards the people my criticisms are targeted at. Ah. Here's an example from my discussion of Denim's. Basic hey, she just got banned for being anti-Semitic, guys. Epic Jew W. Unironic epic Jew W. She spends two hours slowly reviewing the drama and cherry picking the lousiest evidence to show to her audience. Cherry picking is a risky accusation to make because no. it's kind of hard to prove. Because who doesn't love to pick a nice set of cherries? <laughs> Consensually, of course. Okay. I only consensually bench press women. Unfortunately, I can't do it because the only women I like are too heavy for me to bench. So it is what it is. In order to prove this, that she was cherry picking, he would need to go through the stream and show examples where she deliberately ignored certain evidence in favor of less tangible evidence. She might've been doing that, uh, but we have no idea because he just calls it cherry picking, does not show how that happens. And because he's the one making that charge, I don't have to go through all of Denim's streams to try and debunk it. Because if that's true, he's got a good point actually, but he's not showing it. The thing is Noah, it if you're gonna make the claim, you're the one that's gotta back, back it up, babe, back it, back it up, baby. Now that doesn't mean that Noah can't uh, take initiative to it himself. But uh, it's a decent point. Out of my way to archive the entire two hour segment, I also made a separate video, which I mentioned in this BreadTuber video, where I go over this point in more detail. I linked to my archive in the description of both, which has timestamps for people to follow along. And my more in depth coverage came out two weeks before Noah posted this, so he probably knows. Stuff like this is the average argument he makes. I'm not saying everything he said is incorrect, but he does a bad job explaining himself. Like, I do agree that I could do a better job at showcasing the examples I have, yeah. though, unlike Noah and many other YouTubers. That is fair, because I think that's like the beginning of that. That, like that was one of the I think I remember that was one of the criticisms to his videos. I link to the videos I talk about. That's good that you link to the videos, but you should at least have enough of your video in there to like show the wrong. Right. And then it'd be like, hey, here's the full thing if you want to check it out so you can see that's not out of context. My overall issue with him is Noah's artificial nuance. He pretends to be unbiased, but instead downplays or defends those on his side. <laughs> I mean the only person in my video that I would never pretend to be. <laughs> nuance. Outright condemns as Vosh, and rightfully so. Though it's clear he's still butthurt about losing that debate from two and a half years ago, which is why he didn't want to debate Sean several months ago. I don't believe he's here to have an honest conversation. He's pissed he got mentioned in a video of half a million views, and wants to paint my arguments as weak. Nor uh, to just it's only 434,000, bud. Not quite a half a million. I, I'm just fucking with it. his own actions. <laughs> the only time he apologizes for something is the comment brigading he did to Xander Hall, but he still gives out excuses about how he only had 5,000 subs at the time. I don't think he has the capability to apologize for something unless it's been a long enough time. I mean, I just found out he apologized for his video on Patience Xena. Hey, excellent video. I found your channel recently through your video on Duncan and saw you mentioned this one. I'm surprised and kind of bummed that I'm only seeing it now. LOL. You broke the situation down. I don't in the care. comment section to Unpoetic Justice's video on the topic. And honestly, Patience critiques of him are just as relevant as ever. I remember watching that. They're a pretty, pretty good video. Yeah. Noah claims that her nuance takes are artificial, when in reality, his are. I don't know. You know, it worries me a little bit because this ecosystem of content, it thrives on the death of nuance. No, Noah, your political views rely on the death of nuance. They rely on people not seeking out different perspectives and different information. The fact that you seem to feel the need to shelter your audience from alternative perspectives and the fact that you seem to feel the need to shelter your audience from discovering different pieces of information kind of implies that your position relies on ignorance. It relies on your audience not knowing anything else outside of what you tell them. It relies on them not exploring other perspectives and not exploring other views points on issues. If your views are so coherent and your views are so strong and you're so confident in your views, you should be very confident to allow your audiences to go and explore different perspectives and different different opinions on issues with the confidence of knowing that they won't necessarily change their views. But if your views rely on no nuance because you don't encourage them to seek out different perspectives, then that kind of shows that you don't actually think they hold Sorry, I'm I'm wild in the chat. <laughs> hold up on their own. If you have to police what your audience views and you have to tell them what to avoid and what not to avoid, then quite clearly they're quite flimsy. Because if all it takes is one of your viewers to watch a video like mine or watch a video like Abram Preach to completely change their mind, then those views can't be that strong on their own, then can they? Anyways, I don't know if no kind of base, sure. I was actually going <laughs> to respond back to this in any way. If he does, I'm sure he'll double down and not correct the record, especially in relation to Panapanata. In fact, the guy will definitely not to be rude. I don't think I would watch Noah Sampson's response. I was curious about this one. Kind of over it at this point, though. He uses this as an excuse to send another harassment campaign my way. Noah will just ignore that and pretend that the hate against a panada is unjustified, just like with Ethan. To be honest, I wish that Noah did try to be fair, but his bias sticks out like a sore thumb. There's no point in trying to correct him anymore, so this should be the last video on him. 
If his takes in the Ethan Defense video are as bad as I think they'll be, I'll mention it somewhere. And if he responds to this video, then I'll respond back in a community post. Thanks for watching, and if you want to hear my take on any of Noah's other points, you can ask in the comments below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Okay. Um, incredible stuff. But what's the rest of this? Oh, it's just an outro. Cool beans, man. Good video.